There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. Guitar, a statement on modern society. Ooh, ain't modern society awful? They're coming to get you, Barbara. Hello, and welcome back to the Cabin Night Podcast. I'm Jake. I'm James. And I'm Rob. And it's that time of year. Well, actually, it's a bit later than that time of year because schedules, schedules rather, and life. Uh, but we're going to be discussing our albums of the year. The year being 2022, not 2023 as it is now. But before we answer that, we'd like to invite you to grab a drink, make yourselves comfortable, and enjoy the discussion. Research. Oh, <laughs> well, you, you're hosting, you start. Okay, album number one. <laughs> Uh, no, we were discussing earlier. Um, you said that you thought it was a particularly good year. For... I, I genuinely did. I, I thought last year <clears throat> was a very good year for music. Like, as a point, I mean, we'll get on to the actual rankings and what albums are here and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of our favourite bands, not all of them, a lot of our favourite bands released new music last mm, year. They did. And there's a strong possibility that none of them feature on our... Uh, or at least not as many of no. them as you would expect. Saying, no. no. Uh, saying like... Especially when we talk about the Cabin Night, how much about our Cabin Night favourite bands. There's a strong possibility that they're not going to appear on all of our lists, or even mm-hmm. one of our lists. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's it was that strong a year, I think. Mm. I know there is one of our favourite bands that definitely isn't appearing on on my list. Or mine, I think. It's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. This year, I think that would be appearing on yours. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> What's the controversy? I think we're three. Let's all say the band at the same time. One, two, three. Come on, I'm Ghost. On. Okay. The, yeah. Although Ghost also isn't appearing on mine. <laughs> but Ghost certainly not appearing in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's fair, seeing as they've appeared a lot already in this podcast. Yeah. Not on this podcast, though, Tobias. I hope you're listening. <laughs> Please answer my <laughs> please answer my emails. We've seen Jesus is coming. But what's he doing? <laughs> oh, first, so one, first one's down. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> Hang um, on. I got. I wait. Wait. <laughs> so um, should we should we go with the? I, I feel like I want to go straight into my ones. I feel like they should be honourable mentions first. Can we do honourable mentions last? Because I've still not decided on one place in my so I feel like I've, got one. <laughs> I've got two. Can I go with one of mine? He's, de- he's not decided oh, whether. Oh, no, right, sorry, got... we've not decided whether we can have it as an album or it's an honourable mention. <laughs> I, I have. Okay, right. I'll say. I'll say this now. My format. I have three definites. Mm-hmm. I have one that should definitely be in those three, but is the contentious one. Mm-hmm. And then I have a joint fifth place. Okay. And then I also have a dishonourable mention. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I think I'm going on well, I feel three. Like, I feel like Watch Mojo doing all these top five, <laughs> top five, ten, top the three, three definites and three honourable mentions on my. I have three definites, definitely, and then okay. a couple of. That I okay, so with. let's so we're all basically we're all going to say our three albums of the year because it's contentious and it's a good segue into the contentious debate that we're going to have and probably tell you that you can't have yours. Uh, I'm then gonna go I will my, stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with one of my honourable mentions, uh, and that is the album. Um, He's forgot. This is why we made notes. Do you remember last year when we had to re-record it because I forgot the name of the fucking album? Skeletons, I think. <laughs> Skeletons by Brothers Osborne. Um, the reason why it's only an honourable mention, and because I'm doing the right thing and making it an honourable mention only, James, is because it wasn't actually released last year. It was the special edition that was released last year with new songs so it, in by your argument it counts okay so it's not no mention you want to put your top you put it put your top put it top yeah no because i don't particularly like any of the new songs that they've put well on that's it. your own problem <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it is called skeletons by brothers osborne it's a wonderful album um it was actually originally released in 2020 um but it's got that's not two years earlier then yeah oh. it's got several of my uh, you definitely brothers. can't have it sorry <laughs> for, for, for background Brothers Osborne are a country rock um, outfit but they, they do lots of other associated genres like um, like Outlaw and most classic 90s golden era country as well um, but as one a bit uh, of blues to them as well yeah that's a bit of blues isn't there but certainly maybe I've, I'm sure I've seen them at download at least once mm-hmm. but I'm sure really they did quite rocky when they, when I've only heard bits of what you, when we've had blues a drink and Whiskey and Myers have done it as well they've, done, mm, they've played Myers. download I've only heard what when we've had a, a drinking listing cabin yeah, yeah. I've only heard what you played mm-hmm. in those sessions yeah um, 
But yeah, the, the um, are we doing a playlist by the way from from honorable mentions, or is it only the ones that feature on the album of the year? Though it depends if you're allowing my honorable mentions to be an actual album. So that last. Well, one. you're the one with the pen and paper, so start writing. <laughs> right, my album is in there then. Right. Well, is it one? Is it one song from each album? Or is it I'd, two? Say t- I'd say two. Yeah. Oh, because it's, it's nice, nice because because you want more than one track from the album to show yeah. like for me a lot of them are different sides of yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. different kind so I'd say two. okay so the first track I'm going to pick from from this album is uh, is the, actually the title track Skeleton well, uh, well I'd, right, uh, here's maybe a weird thing Cabin Night Admin isn't it fun if it's an honourable mention I'd say just one track because okay. that's, that's what if it's an honourable yeah. mention mm-hmm. well okay it was the first one I heard from the album so it remains the same it's the title track from the album called Skeletons um, and it's it starts off wonderfully Western, like, and I don't mean country and Western, you know, silly tassel shirts, white boots, and white cowboy hats. I mean Western, as in your, your weekend, Clint time. East, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm actually talking about, uh, you know, actual cowboys, actual Clint Eastwood shit. Um, it's quite dusty and dirty, and then when the song kicks in into something more recognisable as a Brothers Osborne song, it's got a, a wonderful message about the the the, the, the singers girl is running around behind his back and he's trying to work it out he says she's got skeletons in the closet and that sort of thing yeah it's good okay. it's good he's got a wonderfully sexy voice as well okay very deep very deep <laughs> uh but yeah the video is fantastic as well if you're a few uh amateur animation fans out there the uh the video is animated and the lead singer and the guitarist the brothers osborne mm-hmm. if you will uh are skeletons but they've still got the hair okay. <laughs> and the cowboy hat so yeah that is my first honourable mention, but it's not on the albums of the year because it wasn't released. Yeah, well. Year. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, okay. Well, we've been dancing around it long enough while we talk about it, haven't we? <laughs> so this would be this would be my album of the year if you guys let me have it. But we're not. So we obviously not. Because <laughs> um, while the original album was released in 2021, this version, which is a special edition with an entirely new recordings of lots of different songs. Uh, it's Wardruna's album that I can't pronounce because Wardruna's albums are so unpronounceable. Uh, Unless you... Yeah. No, we do hyphen, first flight of the White Raven. <laughs> so, it, yeah, so it is a re-release of from 2021, uh, which was a really good album. I, the, I think the reason I'm feeling so passionate about this album is that I have fallen in love with Wardruna because of this album. Mm. I had never really heard them before and then one song came out and I can't remember which song it was and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I, I, I quite like that. I should discover more and then I just blitz their back catalog. I just find it weird how they're, they're lumped in with the black metal but which they is, aren't really which black is, metal. It's just Gull. Yeah. Gull did it. That's, that's yeah. how it started with Gull. I forgot I went to. Yeah. yeah. And then didn't he? Gal went on to Gal's weird word. Gal's what? weird. Yeah. yeah. Gal is weird. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is. Um, it's and I do not use this term lightly, but Wardrow's music is beautiful. It really, it is. is. It's haunting. It is mm. stunning on every level. I can barely pronounce any. Any of their, uh, their so tracks. let's let's pick a song to put on the playlist. Then. Uh, well, I, know, I know what song it is. I know what song it is because if you guys, because right, so the special edition is during lockdown. Obviously, lots of people did these live stream recordings and stuff like that. So Walter Rooney did exactly the same. Did a live stream recording, but they were all slightly different arrangements of their other songs. So I always count them as new recordings. However, you guys get yeah. into the quality. Yeah, so I did pick two songs from both sides of the album. So if you just maybe get from the special edition, I did have two tracks of special edition, which is also quite good because my favourite one appeared on both. So, <laughs> so that will do. So, so, so a little bit of background research. Just Swordruna can actually mean one of two things. The word in Old Norse it can mean guardian of secrets or she who whispers. Apparently, I knew the the guardian of secrets because of the inclusion of the word rune in there. Okay. Uh, runes before Odin lost his eye were mm. the secrets of the the, the time gone past, mm. secrets of magic which he learned mm. after losing his eye. That was the price for learning the secrets of the runes. So that's fascinating. That's fascinating. Saying is so good. <laughs> Just yeah. talking about it. I feel bad. I feel bad saying you can't have it because it's, they are a great man. No, they are. <laughs> Yeah, so it hasn't said, but you can have it. You can have it. It's still keeping. The, I'll, 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 saying I you will, can't have I it. I will do. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to my own um, weird admin I've set out. Then, so I'm only picking one song. 
Um, from each CD, though. So, no, no. <laughs> um, and it is Skuge. Skuge? Uh, S-K-U-G-G-E. Uh, and I've, I've played that, actually, on for our cabin, mm. but it's just starts off really quite, almost like a, a funeral drone, mm. really. Quite, everything they do sounds quite, um, quite dour and um, sort of um, melancholy. But then it really picks up and becomes quite heavy. Mm. So for those who don't know Waldrunner, because I haven't really discovered them, they are um, basically a Scandinavian folk band. They sing in some form of Scandinavian. I don't know if it's uh, Finnish, Swedish. I believe it's, it's like, Norwegian. Or Norwegian, I, or, or a, a dead language. Oh, yeah, a com- a com- yeah, a com- a combination. Yeah, combination. Well, yeah. And they try and play with as many traditional instruments as possible. They have been lumped with metal, but mm. there's not a lot of... Other than Gaal, you know, there's not really... No. And Gaal's not even with them anymore. Although, on you know, uh, Metal Headbangers Journey, the documentary that Sam Dunn did into the history and all the different subcultures mm. when he gets to the black Norwegian metal stuff uh, he uses at least two Waduna songs playing in the underneath like almost like a score mm. to that bit but he uses Waduna twice well speaking of scores I don't know you told me this they do a lot of the music for the TV series Vikings yeah, which makes a lot actually, of sense they have actually appeared in an episode they're singing the and I'm just trying to find the name of the song now I think another one you mean is yeah. the funeral march one yeah. it's actually not on my list because there are far too I would literally no word of a lot I would just put that entire album on there as a recommended song it is that good Hell it's, again Hell again um, and that's an actual old nurse funeral song and they sang it at a funeral on Vikings and it is yeah, it's got it, haunting I, I yeah. cannot say enough good things about Waldron I appreciate they're not for everyone I will put that out there right away they are not for everyone have you very similar because they are from same neck at Woods as, as the uh, to coin a Sheffield term is it a Sheffield term that I think it's a British neck term. Neck at Woods. Neck, neck, oh, woods. neck at Woods. Neck, you're saying, yeah, oh, the way you say it, yes, that makes it Sheffield. Well, anyway, um, Hellung. Hellung. Yes, they are very, very similar. Very aren't similar. They? I think I'll, I prefer Ward Runa because there's not as much gimmick like chanting with Hellung. I don't mind that. It's, well. it's more, it's more Hellung feel a bit gimmicky for me. The, I mean, still very good. Don't yeah, it's, it's, all very, it's still traditional, mm. the same. But I think the look, she, the, I think the singer's got like a full white gown on, she and has. antlers and everything. Whereas Wardruna perform very much in simple tunics. So. Yeah, they perform yeah. basically in, um, Nor- in traditional Nordic costume mm. clothes, really, rather yeah. than, rather than you know. Is the way to say if you know a monomartha singing about the Vikings and battles, mm. Wardrin was singing about being at home and mm. thinking, you know, or what, what I can guess, I don't know what they're fucking saying, um, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I could wax lyrical about them for hours. Uh, they are beautiful, I find them quite peaceful, mm. Mm. very peaceful. I did freak myself out when um, I had a shift at work and I was staying late because it was a, it was an out and I, it was nearly Halloween so I thought I'd read Woman in Black and reading Woman in Black listening. while listening to Wardrobe was quite quite haunting yeah. um, especially when it, it was starting to the, it was starting to pick up the pace when I was reading it as he was going into the bog to go in, you know yeah. that was like oh this is getting oh it's all <laughs> I think I think it started playing it's one of my my brain may have conjured this memory by the night, but I'm sure it started playing Hell the, 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 as he looks up and saw her in the window. Yeah. yeah. My least favourite part of the book. Yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm rather my favourite part. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll stop talking about Wardrobe now because I've. Great band there. Check them out. Phenomenal yeah. band. Yeah, yeah, and they would. That would be my album of the year. Basically, it would be my album of the year because I'm annoyed I haven't found them sooner. It's basically yeah. why they would be my album of the year. Just, it, it is odd. Because you think, like, I mean, I know we've said it enough times, we're going to bloodstock. Like, the bound to, when you're walking through campsites, someone's bound to be playing it as you're walking through. Oh, that's what I love, that's or, what like, I love. A, someone's going to sleep in the tent with Wardruna playing next to them. Well, that's what I love about metal, is that it's such a robust genre. There's yeah. all the different subgenres, and blah, 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 but you can go to a festival. Like, you know, I was looking at the bloodstock poster for this year, coming this year, coming up, and the fact that on the band you've got all these sort of death metal bands and black metal bands. And then, you know, it's all got the you know, traditional, like, you know, um, really cracky writing and, you know, illegible band logos. Just like and broken leather, like a broken leather yeah, sofa. Yeah, broken leather sofa. And then suddenly in the bottom right hand corner there was um, Church of the Cosmic Skull, yeah. which is a rainbow, really nice 70s font. Like, <laughs> yeah. And the fact that these people can sit comfortably yeah. alongside the rest yeah, proves yeah. how... And people will love them. And people will love them and they're going to go down a fucking storm, you know. Yeah. And, you know, like bands that go together, so uh, Nightflight Orchestra... 
He's a lot of the same band as in um, Blood Simple. Mm. A lot of the same band. You're getting that wrong. It's not Blood Simple. It's, it's Soil Work. Soil Work. Still, okay. Do they have a song called Blood Simple? Is that why I keep getting it wrong? I don't know about that. No, Blood Simple were a band. I oh, know Blood Simple were a band. Blood Simple were a band. Mm. Simple, band. Mm. But anyway, so. I saw them in Downland in 2000. I saw them at Nottingham Rock City supporting Avenged Sevenfold. Wow. At Rock City. That's a while ago. That was what? Was that White Album? That was uh, self titled, yeah. Sorry, right, we will, we will move on. Got him up. We'll re- we, we, yep, I can't speak. I am going to Fill us in. do this one because it was the first album that came out that I that I liked on top. I mean, I knew it was coming out, just I wouldn't have. This is not a little mention, or is this? This is my first album. Oh. It came out on January the 21st. Uh, the title track and the album name uh, is a place where uh, the gentleman that wrote the song lived by. On Blow Street by Keith uh, Sutherland. Keith. Oh. It came out on January the 21st last year. What a great album. It's, I remember we, we were talking about it at the time. Uh, when I first heard it, it was my least favourite. Yes. Although the songs are by far better, the better written it's songs. It's such a performer now. Yeah. It was like before it were. You could tell he was he enjoyed it and he was just doing yeah. his thing. But this is an album. This is a, yeah. Uh, well, it's his. I think it's a country album. I think it's his first complete. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's been great songs put on a CD together, but this is his first proper okay. album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, again when it came out, I weren't as keen on it. Um, but then the more and more I've listened to it, uh, the more and more I like it. I've, I've seen it live this year. Some of the tracks this live, live this year. I've got a date to go to because he got COVID at the end of last year, so I suspended his second date that I was going to. So that was. I mean, he's already seen it once, to be fair. Yeah, I've already seen it. Have they said when that's going to be? Not yet. yet. No, not yet. Well, there were, I think, two at band that were testing positive but showing no symptoms. So they were willing to play on. They played under masks and stuff like that. And then uh, Keith got it and like, well, I've got it. I'm not touring with it. So, um, yeah, he pulled. He pulled a. It was the last date on the tour as well. So oh, was, so literally just one yeah, day. Yeah, so I, I saw him at Lead Mill on Halloween. Halloween and I was due to go and see him on the 9th of November um, in Manchester. Uh, but the 9th of November one got pulled. Um, now, I didn't I didn't envisage playlists. Um, so I'm just going to... Uh, Can I pick one instead? No. Can I pick a wardrobe or something instead? <laughs> No, no, okay, yeah. I was, I was gonna go for one of the singles, but I don't think I am. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with County Jail Gates. Well, if it's a proper pick, Robbie, you get two. Oh, it's a proper pick. Probably you get two. It's a proper pick. County what jail? Sorry. County Jail Gates. County Jail. What's the song where is is beefing at an old lover or uh, I think one of the lyrics towards the end of the song is, "I'll see you in hell when I fucking die" or something. Oh, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Let me just uh, get album listing up. Uh, I would go with either Two Stepping in Time or... You just step up with Mary Poppins? Full of Love. Stepping down, stepping down. Heart full, is it Heart Full of Love? So Full of Love. So Full of Love. Um, I like Blow Street as well, though. Yeah. And um, Down the Line. Yeah. Down the Line. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Chasing the Rain. Chasing the Rain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the first. It was the first. I mean, I knew obviously knew it was coming out. It released a couple of singles during lockdown. It um, because I think they delayed the date of the album coming out. Actually, I think it was supposed to come out in twenty twenty one. And because everything was still kind of locked down, he um, up until the album coming out, he released a video of him and acoustic guitar singing the songs just just on YouTube. Just record recorded him himself, and he said. Like he, he he did like a minute explaining what the song was, where the inspiration came from, and then played it. So yeah, so I'd seen a couple of them, and when we saw him last time on the back end of his Reckless and Me tour, he played Blow Street. Then mm. so in Manchester he played Blow Street then, which was also quite cool. But, so yeah, Keith Sutherland. Very good, very good album. We still have to get James into it properly, but we will. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very, I've not really listened to much of it at all, to be fair. Yeah. So my, my opinion is kind of neutral. Yeah. Really, so no. Until he hears it, then it'll yeah. be very typically James. 
I'm reading that nice. Like, well, was that meant to fucking be? <laughs> it's meant to mean you're a music snob. <laughs> you do like it. Oh, we don't. come on. <laughs> They're all fucking music snobs. They're not just me. Come on. No, it's just you. Sorry. <laughs> just you. Is it me? It's you. Yeah, it's him. See, it's him. Yeah. I'm not a music snob. Mm, rather a bit. <laughs> Am I on honourable mention still? Sorry, we'll save one for end as well. Mm. Oh, should I? Have you got another honourable mention? It depends if we're doing three or five. Well, I'm doing six. Three honourables, three actuals. Well, I've got six then. Okay. I've got six, and so I've put two of them. In that case, I'll lump my two other honourables in together. I will do that as well. Okay. So we've got Lamb of God, Omens. Mm -hmm. Good album. I don't think I think it would have been honourable mention for me as well. I don't think yeah. it's, it's it's very good. Not quite. Oh, I need to check my list that I've not actually just given away one of my albums. That was on there. We can record that again. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, he recorded an yeah. he recorded an old album yeah, talking I, about I, the song yeah. as the album name. Oh no, it's not yet. It's, it's an honourable mention. It, it's a return to form, in my opinion, because although again, like uh, like previous Kiefer albums, Lamb of God's last album, which was is it Time? Oh, Memento Mori. Memento Mori. Which the song itself, was yeah, it was, the, but it was the only one. But the one album now. was largely quite flat, yeah. if you ask me. Uh, this feels more like a return to my favourite album, Wrath. Yeah. Um, honourable mention song. Uh, we'll go with the opening track, although it's by far not my favourite on the album. But I do like the message behind it. It's a song called Nevermore. As as, as far as I can tell from the from the the lyrics. Um, I know the, 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 the term Nevermore is a reference to Edgar Allan Poe mm -hmm. and his works, but I found out that they are actually from the same state as Edgar Allan Poe. Mm. They are, uh, Richmond, Virginia. Rich, Richmond, Virginia, yeah. Um, so, yeah, great album. Something of a return to form um, and suitably thrashy in place. It was the second one with the new drummer, wasn't it? Because Chris yes. Adler yeah, didn't. So it, yeah, so no matter what it was yeah it's for the yeah and what's his name now I can't remember <sighs> I don't know. no tend not to concern myself with learning drummers names if, unless they've got <laughs> like at least three albums yeah. <laughs> I'll learn his name next time round. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other uh, album on my uh, honourable mentions is Dream Widow of course yeah Dream Widow oh yeah to be fair that was cla that's been top, if we went to a top ten I think Dream Widow would be my top yeah. ten yeah it was probably an honourable mention for me as well. It's yeah. such a good album. It is. It's, it's weird because in places, it doesn't sound like Dave Grohl at all. No, yeah. not in the slightest. Some of it sounds like Jack Black mm. on certain songs. Oh, which one was it? The it, not Place for Insane. Um, March, of, March of the Insane. Yeah, March of the Insane. That's such a thrash song. Such a thrash Sorry. song. Yeah, that it's one. basically a death metal song. Yeah. Is that your pick? For March of the Insane. And now I was going to go with Cold. Cold! That's just because it is. No, I'm really warm. I was going to ask at some point. Okay, I'm, well, I'm going to move this heat one of these. I think I'd, I'd, if I were picking one of that, I'd pick Encino. I really like that. that do, you want, do you want that to be your honourable mention? Because if you've got honourable mention, you could put two tracks on there, I suppose. Because I've got two more albums to go for for uh, honourable mentions. I mean, I've, I've, I'm, if, if people are mentioning the honourable mentions, I'm just saying that they were probably on mine as well. All right. So. My two honourable mentions are Machine Heads of Kingdom and Crown. I know you two weren't overly fussed by this album, were you? I, I gave it fair, fair. I, shot. It was better than it was better. Recent efforts. Oh, it's de I, th I think it's their strongest since Locust. I think mm. generally, you were, but again, you weren't overly bothered by Locust. No, I I love Locust. I think it, it, depending on what day of the week it is, I can't decide between Locust and Blackening. Um, I'm like it. I yeah, I generally can't decide. No, I'm not okay. I generally can't decide between the two. Um, it's definitely better than the last couple of efforts. Mm. Definitely better. I think I would go for um, for the one arrows in words from the sky, which is the most probably melodic on there. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's sort of so it's very reminiscent of things like Halo and um, Descend the Shades of Night. Mm. It's that it's that kind of yeah. type of Machine Head song. Yeah. I think what it were with that with Machine Head rather than that album specifically. I think if that album had come out before Rob Flynn became annoying. Hmm. Then it had it had its place like not as good as the Black in him, but it had its yeah. place like mm. it'd be liked. The, the album itself is nothing to dislike about it really. No, okay. but I can you know I can put I can put Halo on now for example or Beautiful Morning or whatever, mm. and I'm not reminded of the fact that it's Rob Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas anything that's been released post Locust, I can't help but think 
I'm listening to Rob Flynn here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would argue, though, that we don't want to get too much of a machine in debate, I'm sure it's probably an episode in itself at some point. But I think, though, so uh, Bloodstone Diamonds and Catharsis, there are some decent moments on yeah, there. Yeah. As albums, they, they're pretty nice. Uh, Killers and Kings? Killers, Killers and Kings was uh, Bloodstone Diamonds. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the last one that yeah, I listened to anything on. Yeah, see, there's some, there's some good songs on those albums. Um, just. Not Kaleidoscope, yeah. or Bastards, or, you know, when Rob Flynn's trying to be, well, Rob Flynn. Um, <laughs> and the other honourable mention, it was so, it, basically these are my joint number five, if I was allowed to have Waldron in there as well. It was so close, but it's Disturbed's Divisive. It's, only, mm. it's only an honourable mention. Ooh. But I guess what I mean, this is how strong, you know, I've said so many times that Disturbed are all my favourite bands of all time, and yeah. that's how strong this year has been. It was. I mean, we haven't done that review yet, but I think as an album, it's probably one of the best ones they've it, done oh, as an it, album. It's top off the table. It's top off. There's the not table. a there's not a dip really. It could have probably been two songs shorter in my eyes. I'm not so sure on the last two. It, it, but it's a very it's a very top heavy album. Yeah. Um, but they're saying that the, the song I'm picking is on the second half of the album, hmm. and that's um, "Don't Tell Me" with Anne Wilson from hmm. Heart. Yeah, yeah, that is. That is a power ballad done perfect. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to listen to that because I don't recall it. Well, I we should... you told me about it before. Yeah, it yeah. is good. It is good. Uh, I, I really did like that album. It, it, it was a brilliant album, but so it's a very but that that machine head. I keep I, I do keep coming back to his albums, not as much as the other albums we're going to talk about. But it's like, the first Disturbed album where I have listened to it as soon as it came out mm. in a long time. I had, I don't even I don't even think I did it. When they released uh, Belief, I got Royce's single, and then I bought the album Sickness, and I listened to that constantly. And then I don't think I've ever listened to an album mm. as much as I did that. It was just, it was just. Again, I don't want to go too much. We'll talk about it more when we actually do the episode on it by itself. But it was the basics done to such a high standard. Yeah. It was everything you would want from it. Just a good. Hard the only rock. thing I'd change is Badman. The title of the ti- it. Yeah, the title Badman. <laughs> I don't have an issue with it. I just, it feels like a placeholder name and they're just going to catch it. I just did, you, know, like, you know when they, they take Mickey in British shops, he's a bad man, like Ali G kind of thing. That's what I, that's, that yeah. were all I could picture. I, just pi- I could just picture Ali G in the background. <laughs> well, there's an image for you. Ali G sitting disturbed. Yeah, um, there you go. So yeah, so they are on. They are on. I don't want to talk too much about it because like I said, it's going to have an episode in its own right. Yes, so I will save it. I am going to chuck an honourable mention in. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and my honourable mention was Lost Society. There, that was a, that was a close one for me as well. Yeah, it's um, it's very much departure from what they sound what like. They used to. Mm. Yeah, they're not. Um, it's not the uh, thrashiest of thrashy things like it used to no, be. No, it's Park. <laughs> and Slipknot and mm, yeah. uh, and many other things. Uh, I'm just it's just new metal. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they have, yeah they have they have changed a little bit in that sense. But uh, so the album was if the sky came down, mm-hmm. the one that uh, James was referring to as Linkin Park was one twelve. Yeah. Did that one really? Yeah, brilliant track. Great song. I am going to go with the title track, If the Sky Came Down. Okay. It's like it's only half a title, there. Yeah. If the Sky Came Down, what? Yeah. Would you what would happen? It? Yeah. If the Sky Came Down, would we all die? I think I listened to it sort of later on last year. I thought, oh, this band would be really good for Bloodstock. Oh, they played this year when I didn't go. Oh, yeah. well, no <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> I don't actually think they played, though. No, they did. They, did they? They, they, they put up, there's a video. Oh, is there? Because I know they got announced, but I thought they were one of the ones that got pulled out. No, or no. Or pulled no, out. They, they, no, no, they, they kept going. No, they, they stayed on. I really want Savage Messiah to get announced for Bloodstock. Oh, that's not. They that's probably that. won't, but I really want to. Yeah. You never know. There's, there's, a few, there's a few slots left. There is indeed. Yeah. There's a few slots left. Come on, Vicky, we know you listen. <laughs> or Adam. Or Adam. Yeah, any, yeah. Any of them. Any, any. Anybody who's got the power to send people. Not Simon, don't book the holder again, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, scary guy. Scary guy. I didn't, I didn't mind the holder. I'll be honest. I'm probably, one, I'm probably one of the six people who actually bought their albums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have them anymore, but I bought them. Was there, uh, was there anything else on my honourables that 
haven't hasn't already been mentioned. Any honourable mentions that you haven't mentioned? Yes. Honourably. I have I have a dishonourable mention as well. Do oh, I have got I have got one other honourable mention. Hello. Uh and it's uh, it's uh, technically not an album of the year. It is an EP. Okay. okay. It was Kirk Hammett's uh, the more uh, I never portals. That. Portals. I never that. Yeah, I never um. Well, Kirk is, uh, or was at some point trained by Joe Satriani and Steve Vai. He mm. learned some of his stuff off them. So I thought it was going to be what I call uh, fretboard ranking, uh, like a, just mm. a solo for the sake of doing a solo. And it's not, it's, there's quite classical, not in the proper classical term, but there's quite classical parts to it. Mm. Uh, and then the, then it's sort of spliced into, a, it, it It needs vocals, I think. I, it, oh, so it's a completely instrumental album, is it? Oh, okay. It does, it does need vocals. Um, or it would it would benefit from vocals. I don't think it definitely needs it as such, but it would definitely benefit from it. Um, and I can't remember what the, what the track was. I was... I mean, there's only four tracks on it, so, you know. Pick uh, portals, there we go. Um, the Gin. The Gin. So the four tracks are Maiden and the Monster, The Gin, High Plains Drifter, and The Incantation. It's only 27 minutes long. Okay. Um, Definitely not fretboard wanking, though. There is bits of it, but it's not a, mm. look at what I can do. Mm. Everything serves a purpose to yeah. it. It's not just look how fast I can play these scales or whatever I'm doing. It, it serves a purpose within the song. Okay. Um, some of it's some of it's really heavy. Some of it's metallic esque, chugging along that sort of stuff. And then he's got his own sort of solo bits that he does. And so, but yeah, that was that was my other honourable no mention. No vocals, then it's all instrumental. Yeah. Mm. Mm, interesting. I have to have a listen to that. Hey, it's on the list. So, back to the get so. Okay, now so now we're on to my actual three albums of the year, um, and I'm and. I don't suppose there's a particular order to this, so I'll go with the one that was released first. So now there is an order to this. And that is Zeit by Ramstein. What a surprise! <laughs> this is a shock for me. Um, now, I know you've listened to it and you weren't particularly sold on the album. Um, and I think a large part of... I don't think I was on first listen or even second listen. But then I saw a lot of the songs. Mm. So when I saw them live, they played, they played Zeit. Finished with Edu. Okay. Which is the end of the side. They played Zigzag and but they didn't play Dick Titten. It it's probably gone down up there as one of the best gigs I've ever been to. Not just because of the music, uh, although that was good. I think the, the length of time as well that you'd waited to see him yeah. all adds just a flat. Yeah, out. the the spectacle, it was just the, the every detail's considered in a Ramstein show and it's um it, it really shows. So that absolutely added to this one being Drafted in as as one of the albums of the year, but but yeah, on repeated listens, it's it's I really like the album. Um, the opening track, and I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to attempt. But check it out. The opening track was the track that this, they opened with um, when I saw him in Coventry, and it's a really quite a understated Ramstein song mm. in the scheme of Ramstein songs. Yeah, you know, there was only a little bit of fire, mm. <laughs> um, but. This really thick, nasty black smoke started pouring out at um, where later fire would be pouring out of. So basically everywhere. And because it were quite low and Till's vocals were quite deep and low and it's like a slow, chuggy builder and they've got these big fans on stage that were slowly mm. rotating, it really added to that industrial, dirty, Is it, chuggy... Um, like, I mean, I'm not listening to it. Is it a similar sort of track to Mine Hurts Brent? Because that's... When they play that, that's yeah. a very similar, like, like a so, almost solemn yeah. type of very... No, no, it, it, it's more, it comes in, like with mine, has Brent starts here and builds yeah. to a, like a pretty incredible chorus. The, the opening track, I must Google it actually, but the uh, the, the opening track, um, it comes in at a higher level, but it maintains right. that level through right. high. It's yeah. one level through high and it's just chuggy yeah. drums. One of my favourite... Ramstein songs on that album, Dick Titten. Um, is that, that going on the list? That's Dick one Titten. of the ones going on the list. It's got to be. Um. It's still really, fu- really funny because the, the two times I've seen Ramstein at Download, yeah, uh, they have had to reroute flights to yeah. Spitalers Airport because of or the, cancel flights because of the pirate. <laughs> because of the pirate. Uh, Army of Tristan. It's called that opening track. Um, it's not going on there, I don't think. Or is it? Maybe it is. But yeah, um, just a good album. Um, 
not throughout. There's better Ramstein albums, you know, the best of, for one. Mm. It's, the so only, the, it's the only one I own, is the greatest hits. <laughs> um, that Made in Germany is a great album. Well, that is a greatest hits, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the one you got? Yes, but the thing is, though, my favourite track isn't on there. Which is? Feuer Freud, uh, which is not on there. I had uh, Senshuk. Senshuk. Yeah. Uh, that played one. that track number three or four. And the one before it? Was it the one before it? What's the, what's, what's the one before that album? Uh, was it Rosenrod? It might be. I thought it was what was after. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I had them I was in the one album I can pronounce um, quite confidently. <laughs> <Rosenrod>. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sonnen was an album, wasn't it? Was Sonnen no, an album? No. Oh, no. Rosenrod's the only one I can pronounce fully. But, I and Made in Germany. Yeah. So, Sen Sucht was the second album, so it was the first album, which was uh, Hoodster Light. Oh no, it, was, it might, have been, might, have been, might have been the one after the... Uh, Mutter. 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 Really. Yeah, they were the two. Mutter. Oh, I can pronounce that. Yeah. I can pronounce Mutter. And then it was Rice, really Rice, big, Rice, so. Rosenrot, Lieb ist für alle da, Paris Live, Ramstein, Zeit. Uh, yeah, great album, loved it. it was what, people waited ages for a Ramstein album. Then they finally released um, self titled no, and, and then about a year later they released Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of bands suddenly had nothing to do in lockdown. Went, oh, we can do some more music. Yeah. Which kind of, I think, is uh, definitely uh, the theme for a lot of... Well, I think that's why we had so much good music. Mm. Because everyone was just re- finally got around to release schedules. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look at Trillium, they what, six months apart? Eight months mm. apart? Yeah, yeah they, they released what the Deadman yeah, said at the beginning of lockdown. And then by the end of lockdown, they have released um, Caught yeah, the, the, the Dragon. Caught the Dragon, yeah. At least the song, maybe not the album, the song. Called. Yeah, there's certainly the single was out, yeah. So yeah, that is number one on my uh, album of the year. It was released first, so that's why it's number one. So, <laughs> I don't know what all, I think my three are just in any order. Um, Mine were just in the, what came out. I wanted to just say that because it came out on January 20th, the first one. Uh, I'm going to go with this one first to split up. The, so I want to go with, a, in fact, my top three are all bands I've discovered this year. In fact, my top four, if you can't wander in them. Um, are all bands I've discovered this year. Okay. Uh, so my first pick is Brimier, Voices in the Sky, which is a Mel Death album. Bit of bit of a uh, black metal in there as well. Uh, I, I remember listening to a song going, "Can you have melodic black metal?" Um, Mellow black. Mellow black. Um, and it's just, it's really it's just it's just a really good fun album. There's a few tracks where you can you can hear, oh that's. That's very this band. Very, you can hear their influences all the way through. Um, the theme, low, what sort of theme is it? We're there, like Bramir, I'm assuming. It's a, a it's, I think it's vaguely um, Norse. I've not delved that much into it because I've just been enjoying. I just on a surface level, going, this is good music. This is just yeah, fun. This is really good. Like, uh, so the the, the, um, the tracks I'm picking are the title tracks. So voices in the sky. Um, it is definitely about Norse because they've got a song like called the Aegir and stuff like that. So it's definitely about Norse gods and things like that. Yeah, Voice of the Sky is all, it's quite... The best way I can describe it, because it's quite core and quite fast and quite hard, is I describe it as a lighter version of someone like Dimmu Borga. Okay. Because it's kind of got that, that orchestral influence as well. Mm, symphonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not overly there symphonic, mm. but it's, def- it's definitely there. Um, and then the second track I would pick would be uh, Rift Between Us which again is probably the closest it gets to a ballad on there it's not mm. a ballad but it's probably the closest yeah. they, they get it's just it's a band I literally know nothing about them I yeah. think it's only their second album um, I, I, they came up on on YouTube because I, like, I said to you and I subscribed to like you know, Nuclear Blast and yeah, yeah, Napalm yeah. and stuff like that so whenever new oh I'll watch the video as well yeah um, I went through a big phase of doing that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the answer to the question that Lost Prophets posed earlier on. If the sky falls down, will there be any Lost Prophets? I mean, uh, Lost Society. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. The, the looks me and Rob pulled went, what? <laughs> we can't talk about okay. them anymore. Reloading joke. Um, <laughs> maybe that's the uh, question that Lost Society posed earlier. If, if the sky falls down, will there be any more voices in the sky? <laughs> There's a there's a double bill you never knew you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> with support from Lost Profits. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think so. I'm going to write them on the list. But yeah, just so basically, if you like your Melodeath, you yeah, especially the heavy end of Melodeath, you probably mm-hmm. like Bermuda. Cool. Mm. Well, well, I'm going first this time so that I can get what I want played on here. 
<laughs> so a list, uh, an album that does, I think, feature on both mine and Jake's album of the year, which doesn't feature on James's. Shall we take this one together, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> again, again, top ten. Is it? It's in. It's in there. It's a good album. I mean, we all loved Sabaton's. We all talk about. <laughs> I <laughs> think. Sabaton will be mine. <laughs> I think it. I think for you, because. You have such a special place for prequel. Mm-hmm. It holds such a such a fond memory in your mind. Yeah. I think you were wanting more of that, and they've done that, but they've gone like a step further. I mean, I, I said in the Ghost re- album review that I don't like prequel because it's so far removed, and this has gone even further removed. But like, in I, that said, sense. But like I said, it would be up there, but it's just I, I hate twenties with a passion. Yeah. I think with hindsight, I've been. Far too harsh on it, I think, with hindsight. I've been far too harsh on it. On the album or the song? The song. Really? I think we've been far too when harsh on it. I still out, think it's pretty poor. Yeah. By, go- by, their standards. by Go Standards. When it came out, I really liked it, and I was hoping that there was going to be a bit more of it on the album, but it just sticks out like a sore thumb. That, that... It's, it's definitely the weakest track on yeah. the album for me as well. I still think it's the weakest thing I've ever done. I, genuinely, I would say I, the weakest thing I've ever done. I stick by that. There's, there's a lot of stuff on, and we're not getting into this again because because you're all wrong. Um, but <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on Infestor right, Suman. should be in the top <laughs> half of Suman, there's got some tracks on there that I couldn't bring them to mind. I can bring every track to mind on this album. Yeah. See, I couldn't. When we did the review, I struggled. Was, especially the back half of the album, I struggled yeah. to bring them to mind. Mm. The one that bugged me, is it... Uh, that's better than Spitalfields. Mm. That's better than the, Yeah, that's, that's like that's the in, eight, like, five the like, That sounds like a really good song title. Oh. It's just, I know, I hate, I hate it. Because I, I, I was listening to it in cabin while I was doing something. I can't remember what I was doing. I was listening to it. So I've got this in my head that this is this last song. Mm. Oh, this song before. Yeah, the penultimate song, yeah. And then it, it ended and I was like, oh. Uh, so I went back and looked. Oh, it's 30 seconds or whatever it is. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, it annoys when bands do that. What's the last, what's the last track? I think that is the last track. No, re- oh, is it something into Respite and Spittle? Yeah, it's, yeah. The 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 instrumental is the track before Respite and Spittle. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, the one the one that's just before it then, that is about thirty seconds long. Um, bite of passage. That's right, it. Bite of passage. Oh well, yeah. That's how it's because oh, it's it's done. Yeah, it's done there. I'll say that then. Um, yeah. We, we've we've covered in. Pair quite extensively on yeah. the podcast. So yeah, so I don't think there's a lot we we can say. We other need than to say. Just, the, the thing I want to mention really that's kind of outside maybe anything we've done before is just to talk about when we saw, him, and that's. Uh-huh. No, I'm not saying it for that reason, <laughs> but I felt it like it two, was two gigs, two gigs because of that. I love her. She's my daughter, obviously. But two gigs. I couldn't see Ghost last year, and Sabaton are playing on her birthday. So you know, I, I know. How then. dare my favourite bands? <laughs> I don't know about your daughter having a birthday on that day. Well, you know what? It'll be even better when she comes with me. Yes, <laughs> it, it was quite special when we saw them live because I'd. I know you'd, you'd sort of lost your way a little bit with them in the prequel days, so yeah. coming to see them, especially spending as much as we did on the tickets yeah. as well, they were quite expensive. Yeah. Sorry, conversation we had on Saturday night, I finally remember who support, Twin Temple. That's I forgot the name. Of, I mean, yeah. Twin Temple, they were good. They were they good, good. They were really good. And cheese. Yeah. I, I couldn't listen to a full I, I struggled listen to a full album yeah, I think I they're brilliant live. in small doses yeah I'm imagining in a live set fantastic. Well. they were so good the only thing I mean I, a lot of bands do it uh, they kind of fuck up the sound for the mm. bands and when the main band comes on the sound is absolutely fucking mint but for the other couple of supports unless it's a unless it's a big name support like a creator and a of god going out together they're going to have the same do sound you, do you think you get that in the metal community? I don't, think they do it, I don't think they do it on purpose. I just think Sometimes it's... Sometimes it's just done... I, I, see, I didn't notice it. I know you said it on the night as mm. soon as it finished, but I didn't notice it. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it was done on purpose, but their their sound quality was nowhere near what Ghost was. Now, whether that's because they haven't it's got production the... production value. Yes, yeah. but then again, the sound text will be going for, you know, one they were built for one set, and Ghost sounds very different yeah. to Twin Temple. So I think it's more just how he said it. It's not a yeah. personal... It's, like, it's why I think the worst band I've ever seen uh, was bullet when they supported Guns N' Roses, but again, yeah. the arena for for that type it's of terrible heavy, it's heavy it's awful. It was good for Guns N' Roses; it was more classic rock. But yeah, just bullet that night was awful. Mm. We've completely gone off tangent again. Sorry, Ghost that night at Ghost. That night at Ghost. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because you'd lost your way with them a little bit, yeah. and the amount we paid it, it, it was one of them things where it 
I wouldn't say it could have gone either way because live music, you yeah. like your metal. You were going to enjoy it regardless. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that you enjoyed it as much as you did, you got that special investment because uh, Phoebe listening to it yeah, as yeah. well and, and, and what have you. And when that album came out, because had the album come out when we saw it? Yeah, the, al- the album was out at that point, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. Um, no, it went. It, it, went. Sure it was, it went. because I remember thinking there was a couple of album tracks I thought they would have played and when you told me they didn't. Yeah, well, like, like Watching the Sky, sky which I thought they were going to yeah. play that. I thought it had uh, I, it came, I think it came out not long before, admittedly. Mm. But, was, I haven't got anywhere. But on the American tour, they only played two songs. They only played Call Me Little Sunshine and uh, Hunter's Moon. They didn't play... Oh, no, they opened with Kassarian. No. So they played Kassarian and they did... Uh, Come out Hunter's months before. Moon. They didn't play Call Me Little Sunshine. Come out on the 11th of March and we went but to we the 14th. But we got Call Me Little Sunshine, Kassarian... Um, Hunter's Moon. Hunter's Moon and... Um, Spillways, oh, which is so good life. Yeah, that's yeah. what. Yeah, go back to that. Yeah, I thought I fucking hate twenties, but Spillways is. Oh, that's a, that's a good song. Oh, Spillways is where, a good where song. Twenties is one of the worst songs they've ever written. Spillways, Spillways is one of the best, best they've, they've ever written. written. Yeah. Please tell me that's one of you talking. I about. think it's got to be. Yeah. I think with, like I said, me coming back, like back to go. Not that I ever sort of fell out with them properly, but I'd, I'd listened to Prequel a bit more by that point. Um. When you were talking about. The the live, mm. and I when we were doing the album review, that's what I were trying to cut that out because we were talking about the albums, the album, not yeah, the yeah. live. Um, but seeing him now, mm. he's gone from that just static, static. and I loved that, that just great. that static. But it, it works totally for what they were doing. Yeah. It works for what they were doing. Yeah. then yeah, just, this works for what they're almost doing. Almost like yeah. a high master. Doing that, what I, I what there. I did like is, and I think I said this other night, you can see. Obviously, it's it's Tobias, and it's, it's been Tobias all the way through. But you can see Papa One elements in him. Like when he claps, he still claps the same and stuff like that. And he, it just it's different and it's bigger. Yeah. But you can still see all those different Papas mm-hmm. and Cardinal. And I don't know, I know he technically it still is Cardinal. Yeah, it's, now. it's the first time a, a, the character has stayed. Yes, yeah, it's the same guy. Isn't it? I know it's a promotion, but yeah, nah, same guy. So what you pick? What are your picks? So, uh, do we get? Is it four songs? Then? Well, if it's both on your list, I say yeah. It's two each. Uh, you pick one. I'll pick one. You pick one. I'll pick Spill one. Spillways. Good. <laughs> Good. Yes, <how> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, Griffwood. Griffwood. And twenties. I'm joking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, what you in the you hear, could, you hear, could you hear the snap of my neck? <laughs> I wish we'd got video on that, James's face. Well, I was thinking, how could you? Even, I thought, even though I admit, I've been far too harsh on twenties. There's still so many better. Songs. <laughs> I take the, um, uh, the the short one that relates. Oh yeah, I uh, take that. By a passage. By a passage. Yeah. Watch in the sky. Yeah, they I mean, they are fourth final. But again, not a single. None of them are singles. No. I mean, uh, Spillways is now a single. Spillways, yes, yeah. Spillways is now a single. Oh, is it? Are they released it now? Oh, not long. And everything. Not long. By, uh, from the ministry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. I've seen that. No. Yeah. I I get confused these days because you're old. You're getting old, dear. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You've it got is. visitors. <laughs> but it it's I, not I a. Know, Watson, it, I know. In hell. the age of streaming and stuff like that, it's not a thing anymore. Mm. Like Metallica, years ago, they'd, they'd announced that they were going to release a single on this date, rather than just one just appears yeah, all of a sudden. Yeah, that's true. So, singles aren't a big thing anymore, like in that respect. Like you announce when your album's coming out, and that's about all you do. You don't. Was it? Was it disturbed and did it? Was it? It was what? Oh, what? did they have like a countdown, didn't they, for the out? Uh, was it for Evolution? Was it the last one? No, no. But they just released it at the end of the week. They just released the mm. song. But I, remember, I think it might have been when they were doing. Um, it was either Asylum or Indestructible, and in literally about a month leading up to it. So every week or so, they released like another ten-second snippet of. In fact, no, it was it was it was, um, it was the promo for Indestructible. They released a promo video, and the video had it was a load of live footage from them over the years, but it had like ten-second snippets of all the singles they were going to release. So it had Inside the Fire, it had Indestructible, it had The Night, and literally just little little snippets. Yeah. And perfect perfect sound was on those. I remember the drums coming in. Um, but yeah, so the, yeah, the build-up isn't there, and we're just going, oh, we've got to do song, enjoy. Yeah. It, yeah, there's no... There's no... Mm. There's no reason to do that anymore. Trivium still do. Trivium, Trivium still have, like, a release calendar and, uh, and like, associated media yeah. with it. Mm, that's true. Because the, the one that lasts to do it, Sitting in the sentence, they had 
the symbol. Yeah, each song's thing. got a symbol, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Each, like the seven of the hands got a, a, a like a, a seven hand. Yeah, really well, like with Metallica, that. they've dropped two singles off this new album. Yeah. And yeah the past, so it's only been announced what three weeks ago, something like that. And they didn't announce the album until they'd released Lux Eterna. Mm-hmm. Announced the album and the tour and all that sort of stuff. Didn't say anything else, and then they've dropped Screaming Suicide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it used to be they released one one track. And then about a month, no, maybe two months later, they go, oh, by the way, an album's coming, here's another track. And the third, third single will come out as the album came out, yeah. and you might get a fourth a little bit yeah. later on. But all that was over maybe six or seven months. That's a very good tattoo idea. I think I'm going to get each of the symbols for Sin and the Seven. Where did you get them? Everywhere, I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've, literally, I've literally <laughs> just thought of this. So. I could be yeah. a back, if you do get a back piece, you could have... Yeah, that's a very good idea. Hey, mate, uh, when I went to fitness first... He'd got uh, saints and sinners written down his back, across mm-hmm. across, across down his back, with the eye inter- yeah. interlinking. Yeah, yeah, and it looked so good. It, it, I mean, it was quite big, right? I'd have to, you'd have to, because it was yeah. quite big, right? From from base of his neck right down, and then full width for his shoulders, and it looked really good. Uh, yeah, ghost. That is ghost. That is ghost. Uh, so I'll go to my next one then, shall I? Which is a band. I again discovered them this year. In fact, one of the first bands I discovered in 2020. Can two, I guess yeah. it? One, two. Can I guess yes. it? Go on then. Amorphous. No, but they are they are my next pick. The one I'm going to talk about now is... Now, is either pronounced Ard or Arth? It's spelled A-R-D, but the D's got a line through it to make it a medieval mm. D. So, different... I've heard different people say it in ways. The um, Lexus, they, uh, they, she says Arth. Um, yeah. But when I went to when I went to Lindisfarne, which is where he's actually from, uh, they were calling him Ard, and that's where he's actually from. Mm. Um, I will say I won't listen to what she said. I remember when I was working in care, and we got onto the wonderfully educational topic of precom. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the things you go through when uh, when in children's residential care. He was sixteen. It's all right. It was a fair conversation, <laughs> yeah. and we asked Alexa to pronounce it. In and the she... <laughs> She pronounced it as Preckham. <laughs> and that stuck with me forever. <laughs> it does get me sticky though, Preckham, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, that, that Preckham. Yeah. Yeah, a, that's where um, Del Boy Rodney from, wasn't it, Preckham? Moving on. So, uh, Ard, we'll say, say Ard, um, take up my bones. So, Ard is actually Mark Deeks, the drummer from Winterfield. Or Field. Uh, I remember you telling me that. However, yeah. it's pronounced. Mm. Winterfield. Um, so, side note, I played a bit of Arth. With the best way I can describe how Arth sounds, it is prog Gregorian chant. That mm. is the best way I can describe it. Uh, again, a bit like Wardruna, not for everyone. Yeah. This is a very niche, mm. very niche part I'm going into. Um, but he, so he's, it's this. My dad quite likes Gregorian chant and um, what his kids used to call moaning monks, you know, all, <laughs> all that type of thing. Yeah, all that. Yeah, Mo- moaning, moaning monks and nattering nuns. That's what we called them when we were kids. So I played my dad this. He went, "Oh, have they done anything else? Has he done anything else?" I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'll like it. I can't watch like I played. He went, "Oh, fuck it up." But yeah, so it's just brilliant. So he's actually got. I did a bit again research. He yeah, actually, it's me that does research, not you. Well, I'm telling you about him, then I've got to tell you about the album, because the album's a concept album. Oh, right. Um, he actually has... So he's the drummer for Winterfield. Filth. Um, he's a PhD in philosophy, with his specialty being his actual special subject being the national identity in Northern and Eastern Europe's heavy metal. Oh. That is his PhD. This is the man who takes his music very seriously, which makes sense when you listen to the album. Yeah. Again, I know, I know I use the term... No, I'm not going to use the same term again, because it's not... It's it's not beautiful. It's a very it's a very different album to what I think you two have ever listened to before. Mm. Uh, it tells the story of the body of Saint Cuthbert, who's a real person um, from Lindisfarne. From Lindisfarne, yes. Um, he is the one who spied the uh, the ships first oh. when the dragon's prow first came over the. Crest. That was Nelson. Oh, I'm thinking of. Nelson. I know. I was around at the time. <laughs> Before you get there about me being old again. Well, fair, we did go to the Museum and there was a you're picture just of you there. Applying, yeah. applying for your OAP bus pass. <laughs> <that way. laughs> um, but when, but to stop the ramsacking Vikings when he died, they moved, it's a famous story, they moved his coffin around for basically 200 years because he was, you know, a saint. Um, and when they opened the coffin, he hadn't 
decayed. He was still pretty much preserved as he was. So the classes is a miracle and one of these became a saint. So the songs I'm picking are the title track, Take Up My Bones, which is, again, the only way I can describe it is it's heavy Gregorian chant. It's proper. But then doom baby music in the background. <laughs> really. Do you join two parts of your brain are conflicting, but both like it? It's kind of that kind of feeling. It's hard. I can't tell what is drop tuning guitar and what is uh, what is Gregorian chant. And <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a very good analogy actually. Where uh, does the guitar end and the chanting start? And the second track I pick is called "Raise Then the Incorrupt Body," um, which is actually the closest they get to sounding like Ghost. So that's why I'll put it on there. It's it, if any track was going to be performed by another band, that one would be performed by Ghost. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, but yeah, it's very different. But I actually went to actually went to Lindisfarne late last year, and in the Lindisfarne mead shop, there was an odd section. It was, well, I say section. It was a barrel in the corner that had his CD yeah. and I think had a T-shirt and stuff on it. But it also had a special edition bottle of mead, which I have bought. Um, <laughs> which is a bit sweaty in there, actually. Uh, I think it means it needs drinking. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I have actually yeah, so I'm, it's just phenomenal. It's a lovely. It's a, Really beautifully presented bottle, but yeah, there's not really, there's not, there's not really a good way to describe it for how it sounds. But yeah, it's just different. Listen, basically. listen, yeah, listen. It's not gonna be for everyone, but just, just give it a listen. Um, apparently, he's a, he's local to Lindisfarne. I think he, would, I think he spent a lot of time there. And the I mean, I'm not sure, he, I'm not sure English heritage would let him do it. But if he could perform the album actually in the ruins of the in monastery, the of the that would be oh, that, that would be chef's kit. Because there's a bit, because obviously you go through. <laughs> You've been to Lind- I know you have. You've been to Lindisfarne. Farm. No. So you go through the ruins of the entranceway, and there's, there's bits of the tower and stuff like that. And then the other bits, like where the um, the cellars and the storerooms were, that's pretty much all level. There's nothing there. Hmm. So he could, and there's a bit of a hill, so he could be down there on yeah. the stage, and everyone else could be up the hill, kind of yeah. looking down. And he would, oh, it'd be, it'd be brilliant. I mean, you can only probably get what most a couple, at very most, a couple of hundred people in there. Yeah, but. Then it'd be awesome. But then again, he, spe- he only made 300 copies of his special edition and that hasn't sold out yet. So I think that proves, you know, it's a very Not niche... everyone. It's a very niche I can't think of what better, though, than being in that location listening to something that is so specific to that location oh, as well. Yeah. Like, even if it's not for me, I would appreciate yeah. seeing that. Mm. It's just it's just beautiful. Not as, as beautiful as a wardrobe, but there we go. So I have two albums left and I haven't decided which one is going in my... Album of the year, and you one have, you have an album of the year. You could say this is it. This is number one. No, no, my album of the, if anything out of these out of the three, my album of the year would be Imperial. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, okay, okay, that so would these be. Are your, your runners up then. Um, so I've got I've got two. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the one. Well, I'll, I'll say the two albums, and then you can decide which one you think I'm going to go for. Okay. Um, I have two albums. One is Megadeth, the Sick, Sad and Dying, or whatever, whatever it is. And is that last year? Oh, is that, I forgot, really. It's not last year. And uh, Bloodbath, Survival of the Sickest. Which one am I going for? You see, one's Thrash, and the other one's got an amazing Thrash song, not it? I know what I would go for. I've not heard of them either enough. I would go with Bloodbath, but I'm sure that comes as no surprise. But I feel like you would go Megadeth, so... I am going Bloodbath. Yeah, Bloodbath. Megadeth is... Megadeth, yeah, Megadeth it's Megadeth. It's, Megadeth. Yeah. it's, uh, it's a really good album. It's better than the last one and the one before that, because the one before that was terrible. That was Super Collider, the one before. So the Dystopia... That was Machine Head, wasn't it? Super Collider. <laughs> Like super kaleidoscope. <laughs> uh, Supercharged, that's actually what yeah. I'm thinking of. <laughs> it's a, it's a, certainly a return to form, it's a much better album and to, and the fact that Dave recorded it part way through his treatment, mm. he's done all the guitars and stuff, because he were again he were in lockdown, he's done everything, he's done bass, he's recorded everything. Uh, well, we all know the reason why he's had to record bass, but that's, that's by the by. Uh, Dave Wilson gives it two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is very Megadeth, and I, I mean, I, I, love admit, the, 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 I liked his voice yeah. on it, on, on it, and I, and I feel like he's he's recorded 
based on his ability yeah. now. Yeah. Rather than holding on to yeah. the tornado of yeah. souls. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so Bloodbath, Survival of the Sickest. Uh, I didn't really get into Bloodbath until they released uh, the first one with this new thing. I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah. That's not bad. Uh, we, we saw them, didn't we? Yeah, yeah they were a bloodstock. Yeah, bloodstock. Yeah. Is that with, was that with a new singer? Yes. Yeah. Right. And it well, was on that album cycle that we saw. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just have a I don't think they released another one after that before this one. Yeah. So they released three uh, of the new of the new era. Grand Morbid Funeral was in 2014. Arrow of Satan is drawn for 2018 and then Survival That's of the Sickest. Yeah. Arrow of Satan is drawn. Um, I remember. And for me, they've just got better okay. as they've gone on. The cover on the new album's horrendous. Yeah. It's just a cart that's all like infested with oh, flies. I've seen and... that, yeah. Yeah, it's extremely it? So my two that I'm going for, uh, one will probably be absolutely no surprise to Jake, uh, Zombie Inferno, <laughs> which might feature just a tiny little bit of thrash in it. Yeah, some might say it's thrash, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm laughing at something else last time in a second. Uh, and then uh, the one after it, uh, actually, fe- featuring uh, Mr Barney Greenway, <laughs> Putrefying Corpse. Lovely. Yeah, my two picks. So yeah, Megadeth doesn't feature in my list at all because it, it's just Megadeth. It is what it is. And Man doesn't feature anywhere. No. Didn't feature in yours either. <laughs> no, it doesn't feature in mine. It doesn't feature in mine. It doesn't feature. It's, and I think that's the best way it's to just, for that album. But I say, it, I, think we, I think we all said that the best way to if you got one of those AI machines to go, yeah. why is it a Man of Arth album? It would come up with the Great Union yeah. Army. Yeah. It is, it's a very fine, by the numbers, yeah. the Arth, but they've done much better. Yeah. It's, again, it's fine. It, it's absolutely fine. And that album will go down, the album cover... Oh, that was one of the worst yeah. album covers. Yeah, they had such good artwork. That's such beautifully drawn and painted pictures, and it's just them stood yeah. at the front of them. Yeah. See, I think they've, I think they've done this twice though now because they released Deceiver of the Gods into Yom's Viking, and I well, that's personal, but, but I didn't like Yom's Viking as much. I know, and that's that's and personal then they've released though, Berserker, but, and then this one. But in terms of critical acclaim, yeah, yeah. though, Yom's Vikings is oh yeah yeah, is yeah. up there. The Disney it's, metal, yeah. It's up there, <laughs> whereas critically, yeah. Great Eden Army isn't. Or yeah, at yeah. least it's just yeah, okay. It's um, what I was gigging at, and I've just actually remembered, I've remembered the quote wrong, so I'm actually laughing at something completely different. All I was thinking, you said Zombie Inferno, there's a Dylan Moran quote when he's singing about, he says he was in a bar, and I thought the I thought the quote was, I saw someone in the bar and they had a t-shirt that said Zombie Porn Inferno, and I all I could think was, that sounds like such a, Busy evening. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was actually mongoloid porn in front of me. But just, it just, that's why I started giggling. You know, when you said that, I instantly started thinking of lesbian spanking for now. Coupling. Oh, that's a good scene. That is a good scene. You ever watched Coupling? Not much of it. Oh, it's brilliant. First three series especially are phenomenal. Yeah. Fourth series is it. Um, so you can just stop after that. But luckily they stopped after that. Yes, because they realised how bad that was. Um, but that's a, that's a different story for a different time. Okay, am I on to my last album then? No. I've done Zeit and Ghost mm. uh, and Impair. So I started with Country and we'll finish with Country. Um, I'm going to say a name and uh, you'll tell me if you've heard of him. Ben Burgess. Heard of. Heard of. Just I've never heard. heard. This is his debut album last year. Um, the album title is very tongue in cheek. It's called Tears the Size of Texas. <laughs> it's very much a play on... on Shit country, basically. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I think you were telling me a bit about him the other day, weren't you? Was I? I think so. He looks like Dean at a Supernatural. Oh, you didn't tell me that, really, did you? But his songs are very... Um, they're very... On the album, it says there's ten cowboy, cowboy classics and two murder ballads on there. Now, based on my love for Amigo the Devil, who featured on my list for last year's album yes. of the year... Uh, episode first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of a murder ballad um, but yeah his songs are he, he sounds vocally very different from your typical country he's not got that, that he's, he's got a twang but his, his like the nasal is toned right down mm. and he's got I'd say a voice more suited to rock or pop 
pop rock. I don't know. His, his voice is much. It's not your typical country okay. voice. Um, but he's a young lad. It's his debut album. He's been on scene for years as a writer, um, and on and and you can imagine after discovering this artist, you think, oh, I quite like him. And then on his YouTube page, he's got a playlist of all the songs he's written. I'm just like, I love that song. Cadillac Three has written some Cadillac Three songs. Oh, or rather, I, I some think of the songs that's that what I've heard. From all the yeah. stuff he's written before, maybe not yeah. his album, but but then he's got stuff that like Lil Wayne's done as well. So mm-hmm. he's got like a real mix of stuff that's. Is out he one there. of these guys that sort of? Become famous with things like TikTok and stuff. Like no, that. Oh, no, okay, oh, no. Because now a lot of people have been discovered that way, yeah, haven't they? Yeah. Now, yeah, I, 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 don't think, thing, I don't think there is a Ben Burgess TikTok page. I might be wrong, but I don't think there is. Because well, like, I, I don't know if it's the same sort of thing. You know, um, like when Wellerman got huge, yeah. you know, because that was the bulk of TikTok. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah. And uh, Walker Hayes was another country artist mm. who I'm, I'm not a particular fan of myself, but he's famous for learning the TikTok dancers. As his daughter's doing them, so his daughter does them and then teaches him, and it's all about him being flat footed and you know, all that stuff. But yeah, so Ben Burgess is um, the, the, the title track itself, Tears the Size of Texas, which is not one of my picks. <laughs> you, so you I'm only fine, fine. <laughs> um, it's, it's just a silly song. It, it's talking about his guns and his horse and how he's done someone wrong and his uh, brother's put a price on his head, and, and it's just so ridiculous and tongue in cheek, but it's done in the style of your old country and western style music so it's, it's funny elements as well but then there's a song on there called when we die um and the idea behind it is um it's split up with his girlfriend um and he's going to go out for one last drink and he's asking the question where do we go when we die because he's scared because he knows that in the morning he's gonna he's gonna do the thing um but it's a beautiful song like mm. it's really well written it's, it's quite pleasant to hear uh, so when we die is uh, is pick number one. Okay, you can, you can pick your pen up. When we pen. die, when we die. Um, it's just not haunting in the typical sense of the word, but when it's one of them songs that you can listen to a few times because it's got a good rock sound yeah. to it. Um, it's quite fun to listen to, but then when you get the message, it's like oh, this is good. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's going to kill himself. <laughs> So, so yeah, there's that. Uh, track number two. Well, no, I'm going to mention another track that I like, but it's, no, it's, it's only an honourable mention. So, put your uh, so, down. so the, <laughs> the other, the other one uh, is is one of the aforementioned murder ballads, uh, Killer Man, and again is is found out that his partner's been doing the dirty on him, and she's been seen around town with a couple of other guys. She's not called Sue. Run around Sue. Hmm. Yeah, it's one of the lyrics for this. No, yeah, yeah. Forget that. <laughs> I know a boy called Sue. <laughs> Buddy Holly? Johnny Cash? James. Me, James. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> no, James. <laughs> what time is that story? <laughs> when, so we went to Lanzarote for a second. Amelia really, was really young. I mean, really, my niece. Um, and she was. Is that a, co- is it a Coco Mellow thing? Is it a. It's just a. No, she's like, oh, okay. Danny, Danny. Yeah, she came up to me going, Daddy, Daddy. And I went, No, James. <laughs> and she looked, she was about three. And she just looked as if she go, Oh, you just don't understand. And then she just walks you off. Are, you do not understand music. Today. Yeah. <laughs> and she just walks off. And everyone in, the, everyone in the group, the entire family group went, How do you not know? And I don't have a child <laughs> at this point. Like, How do they not know these things? It's a weird song. But anyway. It is. Eating um, cheese. <laughs> eating sugar isn't it sweet and then cheese there's loads of different verses yeah. the original is sugar though it is original yeah. sugar anyway so the original version is sugar by System of a Down yes sugar <laughs> speaking of which so Tankin released an album last year hey, oh. and it's not featured on any of our <laughs> lists <laughs> you've been masturbating again haven't you <laughs> masturbating behind those empty walls <laughs> <laughs> empty balls <laughs> 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 Anyway, anyway um, <laughs> Killer Man. Uh, he found he finds out that his partner's been doing the dirty on him, seen seen around town with other dudes, um, and I think it's based on a conversation he had with his friend, where his friend says, "Do you want to know what it is who she's been?" And he says, "No, I don't want to know it." He says, "I don't want to know what it is because I don't want to kill a man," and it's based on that idea. If you can tell me what it is, I'm going to run. Yeah, yeah. If I know, I'm going to ask something about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, it's just a rate good rock song, but that's not. I'm not writing it. I know it's not. <laughs> so the one I'm actually uh, picking as song number two, and I know I've gone on way too long, but it probably would if I had push came to shove, would be my album of the year. Um, it's a song called Sick and Tired, and it's absolutely a song for the times because it's a bit more on a political level about how can these politicians continue getting away 
openly admitting to tax schemes and doing the dirty and, and all manner of other stuff that politicians have been mm -hmm. doing this past mm -hmm. year and still getting away with it. And I think the, the, the chorus line finishes with, uh, I think we're all uh, slow off the joke because the bad guy keeps getting away. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's like, it's absolute, it, it's not country, it's rock, that song. Okay. And it's just, it's beautiful. So yeah, sick and tired. Sick and tired. And those are all my albums. So I have what I have one more. I have one more. Um, and you've already guessed what it is. Uh, it is Amorphis. Amorphis, who another Melodet Swedish Melodet. Pretty much all of James has been like really heavy. Well, there's half isn't, and Water River isn't, and yeah, but they've been on the right side of death, though, haven't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it's, do you know what you just find again, like Ward Do you know what you just find a band and just go, "This is literally everything I like in music." Mm. Have I not discovered these people more? Like, Amorphous has always kind of been on my radar, kind of just being there. I'm trying to think what album I had by him. Well, they were produced for a long. This one's not to be fair, but they were produced for a while by Marco from um, Nightwish. Mm. That he he did a lot of producing for a while. Mm. Um, so that explains why they've been, they're so melodic. I think. Or one of the reasons so melodic. Uh, but yeah, their album, Halo. Well, I had two of those. Which confused me, because also last year the Halo effect came out, which is yeah. also a Mellow Death. Yes. <laughs> That's in flames, isn't it? Well, yeah. kind of. Doing what's left of, like, in flames, but without Anders. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is the entire band with, with different singer, basically. X. No, 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 it's not any of the current. No, 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 but I mean, it's the original. It's almost like Civil War. Yeah. It's all of Sabaton. But, but I imagine it's not as um, a civil a proceeding, because Civil yeah. War actually supports Sabaton. In fact, that was it. It was twenty years of Sabaton. Oh, you said they played on two. Yeah, because they played Vacan, so obviously the two yeah. next to each other. So they had the new band on one and the original band on the other, and they all played. Um... And you say Joachim ran between the two of them or something as well at some point. Between Probably. songs, between songs, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they played a couple of old. They played a couple of older songs because obviously yeah. they know. But um, but yeah, and what it's just as I said to you, it's it's um, it's mellow death, but it's definitely the more mellow side of uh, yeah. of uh, mellow death. Leading there are some column A like even Haley liked uh, quite a few of the cause when it wasn't for the gruff vocals coming in it's so so tuneful mm. so I always like I'm mean, Officer's album covers I think they're beautiful yeah it's quite yeah it's that's quite, what I've just looked it's quite, a what I it's quite they're quite geometric aren't they oh, that, that oh that's actually no that's, that's that the first that's the one of the first ones Tales from a Thousand Lakes no the, the new one is quite a geometric I, um, yeah the last two have been that sort of pattern they're all been that yeah same. so there's go, they're going for a theme um, the only one I had was Far From The Sun which came out in 2003 but I'm going to go for um, the, the title track's really it's not going on my list my pen, you notice my pen is not moving um, the title track the, <laughs> the title track's pretty decent um, the Dior is a really, really good track there's one song in there actually I think that would sound you know, sl only slight tweak and it could be a decent Eurovision song a heavy Eurovision <laughs> song but a decent yeah. Eurovision song um, hey, if Lori can win your division, well, yeah, that's true. No, so the first pick I'm gonna is, is the is the song that stuck with me the most out of the album to me. It's called "The Moon," um, which actually I misheard the lyrics, and the misheard lyrics were far better <laughs> than the actual lyrics. It's still a fantastic song, but a song about the moon, you know, things like celestial. Thing. So I thought the misheard lyrics were, oh, um, if you're bound to the ion storm, um, you'll hear a distant call or something like that. Basically, I thought, oh, bound to the Ion Storm. That's a, that's a really good. No, it's just, if you're bound to the Eye of Storm, I thought, oh, that's not as, it's not as interesting. That's just broken <laughs> English. <laughs> but yeah, so it's all, and then the other ones, uh, when the gods came. All right, you write a Swedish song that's better then. Uh, I'll just uh, verbatim take off some Swedish stuff bits. No, I said, I said, do a, a Swedish song that of all these songs. <laughs> Oh, I didn't get there in time. Oh, he's, he's too he's too slow. He's getting old. He's a it's old age. Older. Uh, uh, I'm already old. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's just good melodeth. It's just really good melodeth. Very, very tuneful. Very like I said, you put clean vocals on that. That would. To fair, I generally released on that as well this year. Last yeah, year you said earlier, it's one of the ones that just we just missed. It was completely missed it, but some of the tracks on there were brilliant. Like, Handshake from Hell. Handshake from Hell is really phenomenal. Good. Such a good song. Sunset I've not been sold on any. I mean, I'm sold on her, but I'm not sold on any Alyssa stuff. Oh no, I, 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 I really like it. I think, uh, I, I think Push Comes to Shove. I think I almost prefer it. No, oh, Angela's got so much better songs though. Angela's so much better. I don't, know, but I think everything about 
Alyssa's stuff up to now, up to this album, or rather certainly up to that song, has been very plastic. You are better than this. Fight for what you believe yeah. in. Plastic. I feel yeah, she's got a better range, though. I'm not talking about her vocal abilities. Okay. I'm talking about the song. Oh, OK. Yeah, all right. Sorry. Yeah, if you're going for an actual writing... Yeah, it's a strong I mean, right, yeah. still, I prefer Angela. But then that was the arch enemy I got into. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, so... I mean, we'll get on to the, sure, the rap up, but so many albums we kind of mm. passed us by last year. Cause, not because they weren't very good, but just because so much came out last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a Morphis, that's what I've... Mm. Yeah, if you, if you like your Inflames and you like your things like that, you'll like your Morphis, that's the best way to find it. Yeah. I haven't right, got so any I must admit, I like what you've, what you've heard, yeah. There's nothing else for me. You've got a dishonourable mention, haven't you? I have got a dishonourable mention, and it's a very personal thing. About, so again, like I said, I, I subscribe to all these things on YouTube, so new things come out. And I'll, I won't always go to the ones on that. I'll go for a new band, even if they've got a stupid name. I'll go, okay, I'll go with that. So like, and a band came up called Paddy and the Rats, and I thought, that is an awful name for a band. That is a dreadful name for a band. Uh, it's called After the Rain. I thought, you know what? I'll give it a listen, see what, see what it is. And it was genuinely one of the best songs I've ever heard. <laughs> it was genuinely, it was... I read about it later, because they are a sort of... Um, folky punky type thing best way to describe them, they're a bit like rum jacks in that type of f- f- um, but the, uh, the hungarians have got a slightly different um twist on it but they've still got very you can hear the celtic origin yeah. um and it was actually a song dedicated to the memory of their accordion player who had who had died not long before the song had came up come out um so i don't know whether they'd have been writing the album or blah blah blah, blah. um and it was a song, it's a song about loss, basically, you know, mm. after the rain, sunshine will never be the same again. And it's just a, you can, I don't want to sound really wanky saying this, but don't, you can hear, even in the playing, you can hear the loss, you can mm. hear the emotion, even through the strumming of the yeah. guitar. You can, I thought, I was going, this is brilliant. This is such mm. an emotional, not like, it wasn't like you were weeping. Yeah. Because it wasn't that type of emotion, but. You can, though, that's the, that's the purpose, and, and yeah, not to get too wanky about it, but that's the purpose of the instrumentals, isn't it? It's to complement the message of the song. And, and it, it did beautifully, and I was mm. like, this is amazing, this is so nice. And I went back to the back catalogue, and I thought, oh, there's a couple of decent tracks I like, I don't mind. I thought, well, you know, I'll give the new album a listen. And the album came out, and it is honestly one of the worst things <laughs> I've ever heard. I think if it, if it wasn't for After the Rain, it would have just passed me by. It's just been yeah. ah, an album. But because After the Rain was yeah. so good, and I will maintain it's one of my favourite songs ever, the rest of the album being so poor has left such a sour taste in my mouth yeah. that I, just, I can't even listen to the album again. It's the song will remain the a song favourite. Yeah, but... The song is remain a firm favourite of mine. It's on several of my playlists. It's just a beautiful song. And a couple of other songs in the back catalogue yeah, are really yeah. good as well. Like uh, They've got a song called Ghost from the Barrow, which is all about a vengeful spirit coming to So you can hear the folk roots yeah. and things like that. Mm. Um, Barrowlands as a theme. It's just something I first read about in Lord of the Rings, I think. Mm. Barrowlands being old cemeteries. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they've got a few songs about like pirate folklore and things like that. Yeah. So there's a nice mix. Mm. So, but, and then, but the rest of the album, because like, this one song was so so sad and so longing for someone you know that who'd, who'd missed you know, and the video was really really well done as well because it was basically they're all aged up slightly as if they were all meeting together after years of being yeah. apart and like the meeting was a catharsis as well so it was like yeah this is really good and the rest of the album was just drivel it was just <laughs> it was it was just generic by the numbers ah we're a folk rock band we're yeah. gonna do this it's like ah oh. And I'm not saying every song you need you need the light and the shade, but when yeah. there's this one that stands out like a sore thumb, I will stop going on about this album. Because it, what was it even called? What was it even called? From Wasteland to Wonderland. I don't, no, it's the other way around. It's just from Wonderland yeah. to Wasteland. Um, so, like, so I don't think he enjoyed that album. No, I, that, but I, well, I got the impression that he really did like it. I think I think it's more that it, it, disappointing. That yeah. album. It's not. I think in isolation, I think it's not a bad album. It's a fi- It's fine. It'll it'll breeze past you. It's non-offensive, but because of how good that one track yeah. is, it just it ups- yeah. it upsets me yeah. that that album is that bad. But yeah, that's my that's my dishonorable mention. But like we said, there are so many I, bands. Yeah, I can't think of anything that I would say fell flat. Anything that I was looking forward to that fell flat. Uh, maybe there's some stuff that I was looking forward to and I just didn't go back to it. Mm. I can't say that there was anything that I heard and was like, well, I'm very disappointed with that. 
Yeah. So I think that's been a lucky year for me, if anything. Mm. Um, I say it was it was strong musically last mm. year. I think very strong. People had time. Bands had time to to do it. I think the bands wasn't as time. keen on new Slipknot. Mm. But yeah, something we'll get into. We'll right, get into that. I, mean, I wouldn't. I don't think it was terrible. I get it's normal that I, I still I still think it's a decent album. Is my mind seems to, to listen to it. Again. Yeah, I, I, it's definitely as we would say, it's chewer. It's if anything, chewer. I, I'm going to say that I'm I'm very much looking forward to where Slipknot go next. Yeah, yeah. Mm. well, like I said the end so far is you know mm. it's 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 definitely the end of this chapter of Slipknot, yeah. and which is going to have so really much more creative it. input in their own stuff because this was the last under the under Roadrunner in terms mm. the they're done with the I said Roadrunner must, Roadrunner themselves must be done be now self, self producing from now on so mm. it's going to be very interesting to see where they go I think uh, uh, the, the tell with that I know it's I know it was recorded at the same time as All Up has gone but I think when they finally release through the, the window, window whatever, it is, yeah, whatever it is I think that will tell you because obviously it's, this has all been recorded already so it's how they produce that Mm. And when that, I know it's not all Slipknot, but when that, I know. I want to know. What I I know. We keep saying every little call we talk about this album that hasn't even been released. It's like, but what? It, where, what? What is it going to sound like? And, I don't know. Because and, and when is it coming out? Why? Because till we die. Yeah, that's technically yeah. Is very much a Slipknot song. Mm. Slow yeah, one, it's but there. it's a. It's a de- it's dead memories, or it's that sort of. Yeah, it's the more melodic side. Yeah, of Slipknot. yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's it's definitely. It's definitely a slip hug. It's got that that same sort of tone in the background and everything. Mm. So I just hope, much like your dishonourable mention, it's not <laughs> this great thing and then shit underneath it. Yeah, which it could very well be. But mm. what is it, Jim Clown? Corey, Corey, and Sid. Sid? I want to say. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, well, well, like I said, there was so many good. Like, I never got finished around to listening to Creator's album, which mm. got a lot of good reviews. Again, I don't mention one to it, but um, Devin Townsend's mm. album, Lightwork, I said, very chill, a very chill, mm. a couple mm. of like, heavier moments on it, but a very relaxed album. Um, what? Sabotage. Sabotage, it was good. It, it almost, it, it, when I was, when I originally started writing my list, I was, when I was going, oh, I don't know what else came out this year. Mm. Sabaton was on there, but it very quickly came off again. See, because I think, because if they've done two albums now about First World War, I think if they did, they combined the best tracks from both, they'd have one really good album. Good album. Mm. Uh, but instead, they've got kind of two kind of, eh, they're fine albums. Um, the track, again, the tracks that are good are really good. Mu- I think musically, they're getting stronger. The actual arrangement of the songs mm. are really good. Like, I like sort of the echoes on um, the War to End All Wars. Like, it starts with Sarajevo mm. and then. It's then it ends, so it's booking with Sarajevo and then um, Versailles, mm. which is obviously the start and the end of the war. Um, and Versailles is, I think, it's an octave above it, so it's the same melody but it's yeah. a different octave. But then as it comes back, you can they drop down to fit it, they go <laughs> back to Sarajevo and they drop down into it. So musically, really, really good, mm. but just the lyrics are a bit too on the nose now it's mm. very too much kind of like oh we're going to tell you beat for beat what happened in this story whereas before it was it much was more power metal yeah like like you you said it's lost the fun mm. you said i remember you said that it's lost the fun which they don't have and to. learning should be fun i like you know one of the best songs and i never get a t-shirt about because one of the best songs is bismarck because mm. it's a fun song i'm not fucking getting a t-shirt that says bismarck on it <laughs> <laughs> especially because all the ones i've got have got the very germanic writing uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's a, fact, it's a phenomenal song, like Ghost Division, phenomenal song. I'm not getting that SS style T-shirt they've released for it, but that's a brilliant. But that tells a story without telling the story, if that makes sense. It gives the essence yeah. of what Ghost Division yeah. was, yeah. Um, and without um, telling you exactly what Panzer yeah. Division Thirteen or whatever they were called, No Bullets Fly, one of my favourite songs, doesn't t- it tells you a lot of story, but it doesn't tell you everything about the story. We Is that the one about the um, two airships that brought yeah. the yeah. pilot back I, but home? Again, it did the right thing for me, is what Sabaton should do, is that it tells you enough to get you interested, but then so not enough to so go and do the yeah. research. Yeah. And I think even that now with the, with the Sabaton history lessons that they've been releasing on YouTube, which are great fun to watch, mm. but I want to go out and do that myself. I well, want to hear a song not... about it and think, I fucking love this song, I want to know that story. Well, can I, I count as it. your research? Can I count as part of your research? Because Indy Nidell, who does them, is a historian. I, he's, sure, a very good, I mean, he's, he's a very good historian. I, I'd, I'd like to read it verbatim. 
I don't just know about it. To, you know, I don't know. I, 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 just like, I just like to research. But yeah, so that, that, that's why I started talking. Yeah, there, there's one between the Great War and the War to End All Wars, which Great War came out just before lockdown. Mm. Um, there's one phenomenal album in there. Mm. But yeah, I, 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 just, I think it's the right, the actual songwriter and let it down. Mm. Now, I was I don't say let them down because they're still fucking it's brilliant. Still, it's still fucking yeah. brilliant. But like I said, the font is sort of winning mm. in favour yeah. of the historical context before mm. they were much more balanced, weren't they? But yeah. yeah. What, what, what else came out? I'm just, I, I can't think. I, I Corn released no album. Requiem, they released their album last year. Oh, God, was that last year? I uh, completely forgot. Mm. Was that before or after his wife died? Quite after. Yeah, after, I think, yeah. But they'll, they'll have recorded it before. Mm. Well, they, they were they were strange with not a strange but they were separate. Yeah, yeah, separate. separate. Yeah. I mean, it was still fucking horrific, obviously. But you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do genuinely think like last year was just it was such a strong year for me. I keep saying it, but it was genuinely a very strong year for music. Well, the not fact that it. like you know, you said it already that the, the, so many of our favourite bands you don't you don't, you don't put Sabaton in your list. No, disturbed, disturbed, disturbed honourable mention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Megadeth, I didn't put them in. Just, you know, it does speak to what what came out last year. Yeah, Servant of the Mind was last year, wasn't it? Hmm. Bobby. Bobby. Was that last? I thought it was the year before. I'm sure that was on your two twenty twenty one um, albums. Not early on in the year. So I thought previous Bobby album was on there. I thought it was January, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was early last year. Oh, maybe I've completely uh, probably got that wrong, but right, you're the whole bit expert. I'm not. Yeah, released. I don't know. It was released twenty one, but December twenty one. So just I think it was just on your list. Yeah. I think it was just on your list. Yeah. I was incorrect. But yeah, that terrible that's, that's cover. Of right, tread on me. I do remember talking about it last time. Um, so before Jake forgets any more, um, I think we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any, anything else you boys would like to mention, or do we do we call that a wrap for same time next year? Yes. <laughs> no, hopefully a bit early next well, year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe not. We'll be a little bit close to Christmas next year. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, with with all that uh, said and done, only one thing left to say, and that is you've been great. We've been having that.